Tron has believed in many things during his lifetime. Hard work, education, and most importantly, family. He came to Minnesota from Vietnam when he was 28, got his degree, and started a family with his wife, Virginia. I went down to Rochester with some Vietnamese people just for a party down there, and my husband was like the, like the MC of the party down there, and I was the only American there. So he picked me out of the people that were in the crowd and had me come up and sing a song in front of everybody. So I wasn't, I didn't really like him in the beginning. That beginning turned into the start of their family that includes five grown children, seven grandchildren, and another on the way. <laughs> For all his beliefs, there was something to didn't believe in, and that was organ donation. But that all changed when he was the one who needed a heart. But it was funny because as he's in his bed and they're rolling him out past the nurse's station again, he goes, don't I look great? I just got a new heart as he's going into surgery. And the nurses are like, okay. <laughs> like, really? Not even. <laughs> <laughs> don't I look great? I just, I just got a new heart. I'm heading home now. Thank you. It was no surprise his heart was failing. He had a quadruple bypass in 1993 and a double bypass in 2004. During his first surgery, doctors told him to prepare his will. He, uh, he pulled me aside and he said to me, you know, that, that you're the man of the house now, you gotta take care of your mom, you know? And I think that's when it hit me, you know, the seriousness of it. And that was hard. Despite having a heart attack during his second bypass, he came out fine, and his heart transplant surgery last December was a success. His team of healthcare specialists at the University of Minnesota sees him frequently. Dr. Monica Colvin Adams says heart transplant recipients often reject their hearts. Although Tu's body initially rejected his, Colvin Adams says he's doing well. It's so gratifying to see people go from not functioning at all to being able to get out of bed, go back to work, and actually live, you know, another 10, 15, 20 years or more. Where's my breakfast? Although patients like must that. take medication for life. These are only around 20 uh, pills. The results are promising. According to the Heart Failure and Transplant Program at the University of Minnesota Medical Center, 75% of heart transplant patients survive five years or more and 64% survive 10 years, well above the national average. Beyond hearts, many other organs can be used for transplants. In fact, one organ donor can save 60 lives. But for every family who celebrates their loved one receiving an organ donation, another family is in mourning. They came to the door and said, do you have a son named Jesse? And I just, I, I knew right then I just said, oh my God, you know, uh, yes, and I, I just knew he was in an accident. Sandy Romberg's 24-year-old son Jesse was crushing rock at a work site in 2006 when he got pulled into the conveyor belt, crushing his chest and stopping his heart. Paramedics at the site restarted his heart and transported him to Unity Hospital. He never regained consciousness and died four days later. Sandy was surprised to learn he was an organ donor. And we were not aware that he was. Um, they did find it, the hospital administration found it on his driver's license and told us that it was there. Um, but I still wasn't sure if Jesse knew um, what he was doing at the time that he checked that little box to become an organ donor. But Jesse did understand. He'd recently renewed his license with his girlfriend and a woman at the DMV, who didn't understand what it meant to be an organ donor, asked him to explain it. She said, why would I want to do that? And Alicia told us, Jesse looked at her and said, how selfish is that? And that was my answer right there, that Jesse did um, know what what he was doing when he checked that off. Jesse's organs saved nine lives. It hurts to lose Jesse, but it doesn't hurt as bad as if there hadn't been any good come out of it. And uh, we know that there's been a lot of good come out of it. Most recipients and donor families never meet, 
The Rombergs say recipients often feel guilty about receiving organs from someone who's died and don't know how to reach out. But some do. And Todd, the man who received Jesse's heart, reached out to them. Certainly one of the happiest days since Jesse's mm -hmm. death was the day that we got the letter from Todd. This lady beamed for hours. <laughs> <laughs> the Rombergs and their daughter Alyssa belong to Companion Friends, a support group for families of organ donors. We'll all hopefully help each other through the wisdom of, I mean, there's people that are a week into their grief that could give me some great advice. For the Rombergs, life without Jesse is difficult, but knowing he lives on in others gives them comfort. I would never have a grandchild from Jesse, but maybe somebody else would be able to have one because somebody would get a gift of Jesse's heart or his liver or kidneys. As for Tutron, his gift won't be forgotten. Although he may never meet the family whose son donated his heart, it's no surprise that a man with such a sense of responsibility feels responsible for a second chance. I owe the guy you know, give me the heart here. So my life right now is not mine. I try to do the best I can to help the people. Mm -hmm.